In the news tonight, no jab, no social welfare, says PM. Forum leaders agree on maritime boundaries. And later in sports, Fiji rugby stars reunite with families. From the studios of FBC Suva, Edwin Nunn. Naka Fiji. The government has announced that all social welfare re recipients who have not been vaccinated will soon lose out on their monthly support. This was revealed by Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Morama during the Nanonda Prime Minister program on Radio Fiji 1 today. Mbani Morama did not mince his words, saying apart from social welfare, there are other benefits that will come to an end if anti-vaxxers continue avoiding the jab. He says to help Fiji return to normalcy, every eligible Fijian needs to get vaccinated. Sanya Nimboila reports. Get the jab because the Prime Minister in a no holds barred message to anti-vaxxers says those eligible but do not want to get vaccinated will miss out on many opportunities. Your choice of not wanting to get vaccinated will affect others around you. Stop drawing us back. Time will come when people who refuse to get the jab and as social welfare beneficiaries will not access their benefits. Fiji's stance is that all eligible need to get the jab to protect the country and for us to even relook at opening up borders and restart tourism. Baini Marama says his government continue to ensure that every Fijian is provided with the relevant assistance needed during the current challenging times. The government has set aside $200 million on to help those that were unemployed due to the COVID-19. The government is also working on the $360 assistance or $120 per month for six months. He says businesses will also get assistance from the government to help get back on track. The government has continued with the COVID-19 recovery credit guarantee scheme to help support businesses during these trying times. The government has also set aside $200 million to help support businesses to continue with their services. Prime Minister Mbaini Marama says the Fiji First government continues to ensure that no one is left behind as COVID-19 battle continues. Sainiani Boila, FBC News. Pacific Island Forum leaders have agreed that rising sea levels will not affect maritime boundaries of any member country. Led by Prime Minister Voreng Mbani Morama, the forum has endorsed a declaration on preserving maritime zones in the face of climate change-related sea level rise. It's a milestone decision to protect the boundaries of small island states threatened by global warming. Importantly, the declaration proclaimed that uh, sea level rise, which we know is uh, baked in by current levels of emissions, will not cause us to reduce our maritime boundaries or our rights and entitlements that flow from them. Bani Morama says this is the forum's good faith interpretation of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea as it applies to climate change related sea level rise. 81 days from COP26, leaders reaffirm that climate change is the single greatest threat to the Pacific, calling for urgent action by the international community to meet its financing commitments. Forum leaders urge all parties to the Paris Agreement to ensure that COP26 delivers an outcome that truly advances efforts to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius. COVID-19 was also on the agenda, with Pacific leaders renewing commitments to vaccination. The threats of the virus and of the Delta variant are all too real. All our members have shared first-hand the devastating impacts, the ongoing resource challenges, and the urgent priority for rolling out safe and effective vaccination in all our communities. Mani Morama, as chair, has also committed to rebuilding the solidarity of the forum that works for all parties and restores their full strength. Fully vaccinated Fijians can still be infected with COVID-19. Although community contact tracing has stopped, the Ministry of Health has plans where fully vaccinated individuals could still be tested when and where required. Christiana Uluwai reports. Vaccines do not offer 100% protection and there will always be room for infection. If you're fully vaccinated, can you still get infected? Yes, there's a lesser chance that you will get infected, but yes, it is still possible. The Ministry of Health confirms that Fiji's current COVID response will be reviewed critically. 
So it doesn't mean that somebody is fully vaccinated, they will never be tested again. Eh? So there are circumstances when they need to be tested. So far, three individuals died less than two weeks after receiving their second jab of the COVID vaccine. But the Permanent Secretary for Health, Dr. James Fong, clarified a two-week period needed to be completed in order to be considered fully vaccinated. Christiana Oluwai, FBC News. To our latest COVID-19 update, Fiji recorded 398 new infections for the period ending 8 a.m. yesterday. 254 cases were from the Western Division and 144 from the Central. The Health Ministry also recorded five new COVID-19 deaths for the period August 10th to the 12th. Three are from the Central Division and two from the West. Fiji has recorded 38,742 cases since April this year. There are now 23,981 active cases in isolation with 14,301 recoveries in total. The COVID-19 death toll stands at 345. The vaccination campaign continues around the country. As of yesterday, 531,512 or 90.6 percent of the population have received their first dose of the AstraZeneca vaccine. 206,223 or 35.2% have received the second. The five most vaccinated areas include Mba, Rewa, Nanunga and Naitasiri, which are at 100% for the first jab and next is Nandi. And Asesela Sandole from Suva is fully vaccinated. He's encouraging his friends, youth and families to get the jab so they can have fun and return to life as normal. Up ahead, India stands ready to assist Fiji's COVID-19 fight. And Rambuka treading carefully with his proposed party. Welcome back. The Indian High Commissioner to Fiji has assured that his government is ready to assist overcome the challenges faced by the current outbreak. Palani Swami Karthigayan says uh, they are ready to share the experiences if requested. Kritika Kumar reports. The Indian High Commissioner says they have been working closely with the Fijian authorities. In terms of uh, essential drugs, medicines and uh, PPEs and equipments, uh, we are working very closely with the Fijian government, uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and the concerned line ministries and agencies. And uh, there are uh, some discussions ongoing with regard to some immediate you know, critical supplies. He adds the COVID-19 pandemic requires a global response. Uh, you can rest assured that India has, has a close, reliable and time-tested partner, a friend of uh, Fiji, will be uh, with Fiji, uh, you know, I mean, uh, through this very difficult time. And uh, we are very uh, confident that together we'll be able to emerge out of this uh, stronger and more prosperous. The Permanent Secretary for Foreign Affairs says discussions are currently underway with India. Uh, we had a meeting. In fact, I had a meeting. I had shared a meeting with all our bilateral partners two weeks ago um, in terms of our needs uh, to combat COVID-19. And in that, there is, a, that there is a list that we have shared with all our development partners. So um, we are hoping that uh, we will be assisted in that regard. India has provided 100,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine in March to support our vaccination rollout. Kritika Kumar, FBC News. The Rokotui Nanunga has confirmed there has been an increase in the number of COVID-related breaches in recent weeks. Seru Ratukolo says this is according to reports from police who say that social gatherings topped the number of breaches. Josiah Nanunga has more. People in the Nandrunga Nawosa province have been warned that they are not out of the woods yet and life can go back to some state of normalcy if they adhere to the COVID safe procedures. We again request Turo and Koro and Matini Tikina. We have been given our guidelines in regards to this and we hope that uh, our villages are notified on the laws that we have now in terms of breaching COVID-19 uh, uh, protocols. The Rokutu in Narunga is urging village heads to strictly monitor the movement of people and activities being undertaken in the communities. 
Oh, it's okay, village. We are kindly requesting to implement our social obligation now and our traditional duties, and that is to look after our fellow Fijians who might need assistance in any form. So yes, we can win this fight together. I have been working closely with the provincial council office. The battle is not over yet. I make it my business daily to check on the villages as some may be needing essential items where we can get in to help. Parents in the province have also been asked to supervise and assist their children with their home learning package. Chosayana Nunga, FBC News. Former opposition leader Siti Veni Rambuka has applied to register his new political party. Registrar of political parties Muhammad Sanim confirms the application to register the proposed People's Alliance has been submitted to his office. I'm, uh, I'm an optimist, but I'm also very... Uh, true realist. After months of working to garner support for a proposed political party, Sitiveni Ramboka filed the application in person at the Fijian Elections Office. This is after resigning from Parliament and the Social Democratic Liberal Party in December. We have to uh, tread cautiously as we go on from here. Uh, he's got to be, he made the statement yesterday and that was uh, uh, what we were waiting for, to, to break the ice and get the people to know that we are uh, now uh, in the process of being registered. FBC News understands there are a number of prominent politicians and current members of opposition looking to joining Rambuka once they have seen through their term this year. When questioned about possible inclusions to his proposed party, Rambuka says they are for now treading carefully. We're still restricted on what we can and we uh, should not say to uh, the media at the moment. Uh, the Supervisor and Register of Political Parties uh, made that very clear yesterday. The Register of Political Parties, Mohamed Sanim, says in accordance with the Political Parties Registration, Conduct and Funding and Disclosures Act, the Register will now process the application. So we have three reservations on name uh, currently with us, and the proposed People's Alliance uh, is just one of those three that has now applied to register. Following this, if the registrar finds that all requirements have been met and the objection has been dealt with, the party may be registered. Lena Rees, FBC News. And hours after this development, the Social Democratic Liberal Party has warned its members who may be thinking of jumping ship that there is no place for them in Sodelpa. General Secretary Lenaita Sinduru says anyone with allegiances to Rambuka must resign from the party immediately. Apeni Sawangai Randovo reports this may open up old wounds which emerged when Rambuka walked out on Sodelpa and divided loyalties between himself and the party. As Sodelpa continues to suspect some of its members colluding with Rambuka's proposed party, Duru has made a call for these people to resign. Our days are open if you wanted to move, do the honorable thing, resign from us, move and let us. Uh, uh, continue to serve our people. Duru says Rambuka, as a former military personnel, should seriously reconsider recruiting them. I'm not sure right now how Honorable Rambuka, a military person, uh, would view those uh, type of behavior uh, in the military uh, treaters are not uh, acceptable. So it's, uh, I don't know how he would uh, uh, view those who have been uh, playing both sides. Rambuka in response says he will not be ambushing any party to get the people he may need. No, I, have not, uh, I have not solicited any support from any of them, uh, but I uh, understand the sentiment in some uh, who have, uh, before I left uh, Sodalpa, had been uh, uh, sort of aligned to my thinking. Uh, to the philosophies that I promote as a political platform. Duru admitted once Rambuka's proposed party is successfully registered, it would mean a strong competitor for them. He says at this stage, the assumption that the former leader's voters from the last general election will make a move can only be proved at the poll. Apenisong Rondovu, FBC News. Leading business Post Fiji has expanded its eShop offering to accept digital payments from BSP Easy Card holders after adopting BSP's internet payment gateway. 
While the, with the challenges of the global pandemic, the chief executive of Post Fiji, Dr. Anirudha Bansod, says this is a timely enhancement to its e-channel. He adds this also uh, is a fantastic opportunity for Post Fiji to raise its digital platform to another level, offering customers not only a shopping platform for ghost groceries, but also stationery and other items. According to Dr. Bansod, with the enhancement of the e-commerce platform, Post Fiji is able to support SMEs. BSP country head Harun Ali has welcomed Post Fiji as the bank's latest IPG merchant and says Fijians are the real winners here. Vodafone Fiji says its digital wallet, the M-Pesa QR Pay, has recorded a 2,000% growth in the last 12 months compared to a year ago. This as restrictions posed by COVID-19 has forced many to reimagine their business models and re-engineer processes to continue to remain relevant and accessible to their customers. Inward remittances from around the world directly into M-Pesa now account for about 26% of all personal remittances into Fiji. July recorded the highest single month inward remittances of $15.35 million. The M-Pesa digital payment platform now processes over $100 million in transactions every month. And here are the local exchange rates as set this morning. The Fiji dollar took a different turn today as it gained against our two major trading partners, the Aussie and Kiwi dollars, but lost ground against the other international currencies we cover. Prices were mixed on the commodities market. Crude oil dropped to close at $68 a barrel. Gold rose to $1,754 per ounce. And silver was down $23.17 per ounce. And we now join Sharon from HFC Bank for the latest on the markets. Good evening. The U.S. dollar held firm staying near its highest level in four months against a basket of currencies. The currency was underpinned by data released today showing U.S. producer prices posted their largest annual increase in more than a decade in the 12 months through July. Although their inflation data published yesterday had indicated that inflation may be peaking, the wholesale price data today underscored the strength of inflationary pressure, helping the case for Federal Reserve on its plans to reduce monetary stimulus. Meanwhile, easing oil prices put some pressure on commodity-linked currencies. The International Energy Agency said the spread of the Delta variant of the coronavirus would slow the recovery of global oil demand. Next week is packed with economic events, with major focus being the interest rate decision by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand on Wednesday. Market is fully priced for RBNZ to raise interest rate to half a percent, but let's see how that turns out. And that's all I have from your HFC Bank for this week. Thank you. The management of Lekutu Secondary School in Boa is grateful to the Australian government for adopting the school following the devastation caused by TC Yasa in December last year. School manager Ovini Mbale Namau says when they saw the extent of damage, they didn't know if they would be able to rebuild seven classrooms, ablution blocks, one dormitory, the dining hall and several teachers' quarters were left in ruins. Mbale Namau says when the Australian Defence Forces inspected the school, it gave them hope. Lekutu Secondary will get eight new classrooms, inclusive of ablution blocks, a new dormitory, a new dining hall and four new staff quarters, all built to withstand a Category 5 cyclone. All the buildings that will be built will be fitted with solar systems. All the classrooms will have new desks and chair with a whiteboard each. That's the big assistance given by the Australian government to Lekutu Secondary. And coming up after the break, young activist calls for more action from large carbon emitters. Stay with us. Welcome back. A young local climate activist has raised concerns regarding the latest Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report, which has highlighted a code red situation for humanity. Anne Marie.
Anne-Marie Randuva, a young climate change activist and warrior, says the report has also warned of the impact of climate change if larger countries don't play their part. She says while the report is quite daunting, it's unfair and unfortunate that Pacific Island nations, including Fiji, are the ones to bear the consequences of larger countries' ignorance. I think it's rather unfair and very unfortunate to be blamed for something uh, we contribute very little to, uh, which is the global um, warming and emissions. Um, we in Fiji and neighboring uh, small island countries are on the front lines of climate change. Um, so we feel the impact first, um, yet we contribute less than 1% of global carbon emissions combined. Raising her children single-handedly for 12 years was never easy, but seeing her children fulfill their dreams is a proud feeling for Asaeli Tuivuaka's mom. Vitarina Dakaunaivalu doesn't want to call Tuivuaka's achievements a fruit of her struggles, but purely the result of hard work and determination. Tale Mataira Kula reports. Tuivuaka returned to his family after five long months, just in time for his mother's birthday. I'm really happy to be back home with my mom and my family after so long. I wish my dad was here to celebrate with us, but I'm thankful to make it home just in time for my mom's 57th birthday. My son was away for so long. Not once did we ever meet while he was in camp. We are finally meet today and we couldn't hold back the tears reflecting all the hardships we overcame to savor this moment. It was a bittersweet reunion at his home in Dumbati. While I'm happy for the return of my son, I'm also saddened with the fact that my husband is not here to witness his son's achievement. His father would have been so proud of how far he's come. Celebrations will double when Tuivuaka visits his relatives in the highlands of Namosi in the coming week. Tali Materukula, FBC Sports. In Q&A tonight, Lina Rees speaks with a young climate change activist about the UN Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change report. IPCC climate change report, it's been described as code red for humanity. Um, with global warming spiraling out of control, the report also warns that the world is already, you know, certain to face further climate disruptions. What are your thoughts on this? This report must not be watered down like um, every other uh, warning, scientifically and traditionally, taking traditional knowledge and resilience of our Pacific communities into account. The report also highlighted that humans are to be blamed um, for the worsening of climate change, and it clearly states that in the report. As a Fijian young teen climate activist, do you think this is fair on a country like Fiji whose carbon emission is negligible? Uh, so it is very unfortunate that the reports make a blanket uh, general coverage to blame humans for worsening um, global warming. I think bigger countries that are contributing to global warming um, and climate change uh, deniers should be called out. They should be named and shamed for their contribution to this uh, red code lit. Do you think would be some necessary steps that Fiji and other Pacific Island countries could take um, to fight against climate change considering, I mean, in light of this most recent report. And um, island states are drowning in salt water. And um, I'm calling on the Pacific Island leaders and Fiji included to shake the climate change negotiation tables. Um, I have confidence that it can be done. Coming up in sports, home at last for National Hero. First up in sports, after guiding the national side to glory at the Tokyo Games two weeks ago,
Fiji's most successful rugby player is tonight reunited with his family. Dual Olympic Games gold medalist Jerry Tuwai finally got to hug his wife and children today after being separated for five months. As Venina Rakautonga reports, four players from the gold medal winning team travelled to Suva this morning, including Captain Tuwai, Semiran Randra, Yosef Omasi and Asaeli Tuivuaka. Hailed as Fiji's hero, our most successful Olympian has been dreaming of this moment since the last day he said goodbye to them in April. It's the uh, longest I've been away from my family, so it's something new. And I just want to go, go to them and meet them and uh, see my little daughter. The emotions were evident today even for Tuwai's parents who have sacrificed a lot for their golden son. However, Tuwai has reminded the players before they left today to be responsible and think about their future. There's lots of things to look forward to. So after this quarantine, the Olympic fever too should end uh, this week. And to move on so we can uh, look forward to many things that are ahead of us. Fiji Rugby Union welcomed the players today at Rugby House and they're also making the necessary arrangements for players from the north to join their families. There was an application for, for three players, uh, uh, three players that, uh, to travel in the north, uh, Mangala, Mashi and, um, and Chemi and hopefully we will make some arrangements uh, the next few days to allow them to travel. The celebrations will continue for weeks for our heroes, but at the moment, they're just happy to be back with their number one fans. Venina Rakautonga, FBC Sports. Watching his cousin Waisea Nadungu return home with an Olympic gold medal is a proud moment for former Fiji Sevens rep Pio Tuai. Tuai, who missed selection for the 2016 Olympic team, has been a mentor for Nadungu through his rugby career and was part of the welcoming party at Votua village in Ba today. Caroline Nitavi has more. The village of Votua in Ba has produced some prominent rugby players in sevens, and Waisea Nadungu has proudly continued the legacy. This is quite an achievement for our village. This will be our second Olympic gold. First was Joshua Tisova in 2016. We are grateful that Nadungu is able to continue on this legacy and bring another goal here today. Nadungu says he is overwhelmed with the response from the people of Otua. I'd like to thank the Lord for giving us the weather to have this welcoming party. It is really overwhelming to see the amount of love and support from my family and friends who have been at the core of my rugby career. Next on Nadungu's list is the World Cup 7s and the Commonwealth Games. Karlini Tavi, FBC Sports. It was an emotional reunion for 22-year-old Fiji 7s player Chuta Waningolo and his family as the gold medalist returned to his Navua home after five months. Having been away longer than expected and starring for Fiji at the Tokyo Olympics, Waningolo was greeted with cheers and beaming smiles this morning. Pranita Prakash reports. Waningolo says the reception he received at home this morning is beyond description. Came here at home, they were shouting and running around in the house. We didn't even say goodbye uh, when we left uh, Fiji. So I'm so happy that we came back with a gold medal and make them proud. He has been away for months and he says it was not easy. And there were days when he wanted to break camp just to see his family. Uh, we didn't know uh, that uh, it was going to be a lockdown for how many <laughs> months. So we was in lockdown and we went to a week. We just know that for one week camp. And we, we, when we went to camp, then uh, coach told us that uh, we will not go back home. And we'll see our family uh, after Tokyo. FRU chief executive says local players like Wayne Ngolo have proven that Fiji rugby pathways are working. We have the talent uh, in Fiji, we have the players. It's just about, uh, you know, having the right priorities uh, and, uh, you know, living a, a life of a professional rugby player. With... Meanwhile, Wayne Ngolo will soon leave the country to join French top 14 club Toulon. Pranita Prakash. FBC Sports. Canberra Raiders gave NRL ladder leaders Melbourne a huge scare at Sunshine Coast Stadium last night. 
In the end, the storm prevailed 26-16, but they had to survive a Jack Whitten-inspired comeback from Canberra before registering their 18th win on the trot. Lionel Messi trained with new club Paris Saint-Germain today, two days after joining the League One giants from Barcelona. England suffered a demoralizing first day of the second test as a KL Rahul century led India towards a huge total after they were asked to bat first. Rahul and coming up in We and in Wonderful After the Break, meet the lady who builds luxury chicken coops. A weakening trough of low pressure lies just to the north of Fiji and is gradually moving north away from the group. Meanwhile, a high pressure system to the south continues to direct fresh to strong southeast winds over Fiji. Now to the west, mainly fine weather prevailed today. Eastwards from Pacific Harbor to Suva, occasional rain was experienced. In the Northern Division, fine apart from a few isolated showers and the places we are checking out today are Suva, Nandi and Ba, however, Lambasa had the highest humidity at 88%. At sea, southeast winds 20 to 30 knots, gusting to 35 knots. Rough to very rough seas, moderate southerly swells turning to the tides. The next low tide is at 4.31 a.m. tomorrow with high tide at 10.36 a.m. Sunrise is at 6.27. For tomorrow, cloudy periods with some showers over the eastern parts and interior of the larger islands. The outlook for Sunday, cloudy periods with brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the main islands. And our shot of the day, this picture comes all the way from Lambasa. In Fiji and Pulse, we ask, does, does Jerry Tuai deserve his own statue? Yes, because he deserves it. Yes, I think he deserves a a statue because uh, he's done a lot for the country and he's uh, put Fiji on the map. Because he's the first Fijian to win two Olympic gold medals. Yes, he deserves it to commemorate his achievement for Fiji rugby. And recapping our main stories, no job, no social welfare, says PM. Forum leaders agree on maritime boundaries and Fiji's rugby stars reunite with families. To our poll question, this week we are asking, should more be done for women's rugby in Fiji? Visit our FBC News website to take part and send us newsworthy pictures and videos, fbcnews at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via our social media accounts. You can also download our FBC app to keep updated with the very latest in news and sports and listen to our six radio stations live. That's your news this evening. I'll be back again next week. Until then, stay safe. Mother Manda.